I think we can all agree a cheeseburger is good, but a double bacon cheeseburger is better. Likewise, a handful of cash is good, but a bag full of cash is better. Always, always go with better. That's the advice found in the book of Hebrews. Hey guys, welcome to Scripture in 6 Minutes. If you're committed to reading God's Word, we're committed to helping you understand it. Now in this episode, we get a refresher course from that old childhood math lesson about greater than and less than in the book of Hebrews. Now, right up front, we don't know exactly who wrote Hebrews, but that's okay for a couple of reasons. First, it gives the scholars something to debate about, okay? But secondly, who wrote it down isn't nearly as important as who spoke it in the first place. Now, the book of Hebrews is the perfect word of God, regardless if it was Peter or Paul or Apollos or somebody else who actually put it on paper. What we do know is that the author of Hebrews was a Hebrew who wrote to other Hebrews about a particular Hebrew named Jesus while referencing a lot of Hebrew stuff. Now this book will hit you with Jewish law, Jewish customs, Jewish history, and even Jewish ancestors like Abraham, the father of the Jews, or Moses, the lawgiver of the Jews, and even David, the king of the Jews. So yeah, the book of Hebrews is definitely Jewish, but you don't have to be Jewish to understand it, and nor do you have to be Jewish to benefit from it. See, Hebrews has one crystal clear message that's repeated throughout this book numerous times. Jesus is greater, or Jesus is bigger. Jesus is better. Better than everyone and better than everything. In fact, the opening paragraph declares Jesus to be the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power, which is quite an introduction. And then without any delay, the writer starts keeping score. Jesus is better than the prophets. Sure, they preach the word, but Jesus is the Word. And Jesus is better than the angels. I mean, they're majestic, but they're still creations, and Jesus is their creator. But Jesus is better than Moses. Fighting words to this day for many Jews, but it's true. And Jesus is better than the high priest. That guy, as special as he was, could only go into the Holy of Holies one day each year to meet with God. Jesus, he just so happens to be that God. And Jesus, well, he's a better sacrifice. The lambs offered at the temple, which would have still been in operation when this very book was written, could only offer a temporary solution for sin. But Jesus, the Lamb of God, he offers an eternal solution for sin. So what do you do with someone who's as great as Jesus? You cling to him. That's what the writer of Hebrews says to do in this key passage taken from chapter 10. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Put simply, grab Jesus, hold on tight, don't waver. Here's why. Because our Lord is faithful. And the closer we get to his return, the more diligent we should be in these things. Now this Jesus is better message would have been crucial to early Jews who had converted to Christianity in the first century and were feeling the pressure to go back to their old, comfortable ways of Judaism. But the book of Hebrews screams, don't go back. Jesus is better. Our Savior is superior. Now, of course, faith in God isn't easy for anybody, Jewish or not. And so in the world-famous 11th chapter of Hebrews, the, the Hall of Faith, the writer walks us through a long list of men and women from the Old Testament who modeled faith in God in spite of their desperate circumstances. They endured so much, and the reason was simple. The benefits of faith in Jesus, according to Hebrews, include so much, like a personal relationship with the God of the universe, a salvation unlike any other, 
a membership in the kingdom of God that's completely and absolutely unshakable, and so much more. So as you read through the book of Hebrews, make sure to latch on to the important lessons that the writer shares. First, don't ignore such a great salvation. If Jesus is who the writer says he is, and he is, a better Savior isn't coming, because a better Savior doesn't exist. So don't brush aside his salvation. Put your trust in Jesus today for all of eternity. And second, don't miss the doctrine. Yeah, I know, God forbid we actually learn something while reading the Bible, but the book of Hebrews offers more doctrine than any other book in the New Testament except for the book of Romans, so eat it up, okay? Read it and research it until you understand it because doctrine makes your faith stronger. And third, don't give up. The writer of Hebrews reminds us two different times that the heroes in chapter 11's Hall of Faith had one thing in common, that none of them received everything that God had promised in this life. I mean, God for sure kept all of his promises, but these superstars didn't necessarily live long enough to see it, even though their later generations did. So don't give up. Stay faithful because our God is faithful. Guys, the book of Hebrews bleeds Jesus in every line. So set aside some time to read through this fantastic part of God's Word and let your faith be fortified by the Jesus who's just plain better. And then join us right back here for our very next episode of Scripture in Six Minutes.